Rabbi Naftali and Rabbi Tenpesha Karlbach, parents of the famous Rabbi Shlomo Karlbach, were not people of means. Torah study was Rabbi Naftali's only occupation, and Pesha, who helped support the family by working as a bookbinder, never had cash to spare. Yet they kept an open house for visiting scholars and made tzedakah a household rule. In the days after World War I, when the Karlbach family lived in Berlin, any visiting Rosh Hashiva or charity collector made for their home, knowing that generous hospitality would be available there, as well as good advice if required. The economic recession that hit Eastern Europe in the late 1920s caused great hardship and starvation menaced the renowned yeshiva of Ponevez in Lithuania. If there is no flower, there is no Torah, the sages declared, and the cessation of Torah study became an immediate danger. In view of the situation, Rabbi Yosef Kahneman, who was then Rosh Yeshiva, decided to conduct a fundraising tour abroad, visiting one city after another and calling on potential benefactors. Unfortunately, the Jews of Eastern Europe were not the only ones facing hard times. Before long, the recession affected communities elsewhere. The number of people requesting charity multiplied, and for every penny of tzedakah, a dozen hands were outstretched. To make matters worse, businessmen in the West also began to suffer. Stock markets crashed, trade slumped, and wealthy folks were impoverished. In desperation, the Panavezer rabbi kept drudging around seeking donations, but the money he raised did not even cover his travel expenses. Eventually, he arrived in Berlin, located the Karlbach family's address, and went straight there in hope of receiving advice and assistance in contacting possible donors. Rabbi Naftali promptly invited him to have a meal and rest after his difficult journey. While chatting with his host, the Ponavezer rabbi told Rabbi Karlbach about the grim situation in Lithuania and mentioned the failure of their brethren in Germany and neighboring lands to give a helping hand. Recently, for example, the Polish Jewish magnate had sent only meager donations with letters bewailing of his misfortunes. Another philanthropist, who had previously covered a third of the yeshiva's expenses, was now barely able to make ends meet. Rabbi Kahneman discussed these problems at length until his voice gave out. Hearing their guest's tale of woe as she prepared a meal in the kitchen, Rabbi Tzenpesha Karlbach was struck to the heart. You're going to stay with us here, she insisted, and tomorrow, with God's help, there may be a solution to your problem. Bright and early the next morning, when everyone was fast asleep, she got up, gathered all of her jewelry and treasured possessions, quietly left the house, and negotiated a loan at the pawnbroker's. Once back home, she went to the Rosh Yeshiva and joyfully presented him with a substantial check. The Ponavez or rabbi took a long silent, hard look at the check. On one hand, it would enable him to revitalize the yeshiva and its students. On the other hand, it was not difficult to guess where she had obtained the money, and for fear of endangering her financial situation, he could not bring himself to accept the poor man's lamb. Well, said the Rosh Yeshiva, this is indeed a house of God, and the benevolence practiced here knows no bounds. But accepting this money would run counter to the sage's injunction that no more than a fifth of one's means may be devoted to charity. Giving tzedakah must not turn anyone into a beggar, and your donating this large sum could easily put your own household's finances in jeopardy. True enough, replied Rebbe St. Karlbach, as you say, no more than a fifth of one's assets may be spent on tzedakah, but my object in performing the mitzvah is also to educate our children, and the sages say that for the sake of education, any financial sacrifice is permitted. When a holy woman wants to give more than a fifth, she can find justification. Rebbitz and Pesha Karlbach wanted her children to learn that wholehearted giving to holy causes is the Jewish way. She certainly educated her children well by providing them with a, such a clear example of pious generosity. This story comes from Jewish Tales of Holy Women, 
bei Yitzchak Buxbaum.